that you have got to to own what it is that you want to do if it's taking care of your well-being if it's making a difference in our school system if it's working with senior citizens if it's to protect our ecology if it's to create an economic renaissance if it's just to take yourself to another level it's you you've got to make that happen we can point out many things that can make it inconvenient or can slow us down but ultimately it's on us next step is not only is it possible and necessary and it's you to live your dream to make this this greatness that you have within you become a reality but what I've come to appreciate when you're working on changing your life changing some bad habit getting out of addictive situations or relationships or working to build a dream or making a difference in our society or learning something that's very challenging here's what I I realize ladies and gentlemen and develop a great deal of respect for it's hard easy is not an option it's hard living life is hard see it's hard when when you are 49 years old been working on a job for 17 years and they come in and tell you you're finished and give you one week severance pay and you got to start all over again it's hard when you are married and raising children and your children are crawling and your husband dies unexpectedly it's hard handling just the tragedies of life it's hard when you're working on something and and you put everything you have in it and it doesn't work out you lose your money and other people's money it's hard it was rough when I lost my job and I could not find a job it was humiliating and embarrassing borrowing money and then I couldn't pay the money back when I told them I would that's rough how people look at you how they respond to you it's very hard it's humiliating here's what I discovered that happens to you in life that you will go through things and while you're going through them you can't understand why it's happening to you but after you go through it you get back and you look at it and you say oh now I understand why I needed that lesson have you ever happened to you raise your hand it ever happened to you that that I did I couldn't understand it then but after I got through it then I saw that that was preparing me for bigger and better things that as you go through the challenges of life and you look at it and embrace whatever comes to you don't run from it step toward it don't try and duck it like most people do see most people want it easy see if you easy come easy what easy go see but when you go at what you're going to deal with and you deal with the difficulties of, difficulties of it when you handle those hard things close at hand making those hard decisions right now that you don't want to make learning those things that you don't like to do but you know that in order for you to get where you want to go this is one of the hoops that you have to flip through and I'm saying to you whatever you got to do do it because if you don't life is gonna whoop you until you surrender and say okay all right all right all right all right I cooperate okay I learned okay they had to wear me out a long time so if it's hard then do it hard now what do you how do you hang in there during the hard difficult times less you must have faith you've got to believe in yourself you've got to believe in your abilities you've got to believe in your service your company your ideas unquestionably you have got to have faith and that faith gives you patience that is not going to happen as quickly as you want it to happen a lot of things are going to happen that will catch you off guard and so therefore you've got to deal with and handle it as it comes and not only that but that faith and patience drives you into action you've got to keep moving and keep plugging away I can see people coming out talking to a guy out there watering and fertilizing the ground that's not showing anything 
Hey, what you doing? You've been out here a long time, man. And the conversation in the neighborhood is, you growing a Chinese bamboo tree, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Well, uh, even Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder can see ain't nothing showing. <laughs> you know that's how people are gonna do you? So how long you been working on this? How long have you been working on your dreams? And you have nothing to show, this is all you got to show? People are gonna do that to you. And some people, ladies and gentlemen, they stop. Because they don't see instant results. It doesn't happen quickly. They stop. Oh, no, 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 no. You got to keep on watering your dream. And when it began to happen, they stop laughing. They said, look. Whoa, look, look here. It's, look, look up. Hey, man, you know, I know you could do it. Look here, you got a job here? <laughs> see, t during those hard times, we didn't know how you're going to make payroll during those times when you fail and, and, and things didn't work out. They were, they were nowhere to be found. But you know what I discovered? When you're working at your dream, somebody said, the harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. Oh, it's sweet to you. It's good to you. Why? See, when, you, when it's hard and there's a struggle, see, what you become in the process is more important than the dream. That's far more important. The kind of person you become, the character that you build, the courage that you develop, the faith that you're manifesting. Oh, it's, it's something that you get up in the morning, you look yourself in the mirror, you're a different kind of person. You walk with a different kind of spirit. And people know that you know what life is, that you have embraced life. You knew it was hard, but you did it hard. Now it takes us to the next level. If it's hard, why do people do it? You ask people who do things. Why do they go it? People who climb mountains just for the sake of it. Nobody paying them to do it, just do it. Somebody said, I'm going to run around the world. He said, well, why would somebody want to do that? I'm going to swim the Atlantic Channel. Why? Why do people do that? I, I wondered, why, why would a Nelson Mandela give up 26 years of his life? Why do people do that? Here's what I discovered in high school. High school, I decided I wanted to go out for football. Never forget this. And I discovered why people do things. You know why, ladies and gentlemen? Even though it's hard, it's worth it. It's worth it. See, one day we had Coach Alkin Hepburn had this plaque down there and um, this wood on the floor, on, on the ground. He said, Brown, come over here. Had my suit on, I said, yes, sir. He said, I'm going to have old Larry Littles down there, old big Larry, yes sir, big fat sorry Larry, yes sir. <laughs> Brown, I want you to get down bull neck, yes sir. He said, I want you running Larry, I want you to put your helmet right in his pit, right up in his chest, and knock him off that board. You hear me, Brown? You can do that. Yes sir. Can you do that? Yes sir. I said, hubba hubba, I said, hubba hubba. <laughs> he said, Brown, I want you to knock him off. You're going to make the team. I know you can get him, all right? We'll get him. How sorry he is. Knees knocking and everything. I said, yes, sir. And he went down to Larry. Larry Littles, who played 12 years for the Miami Dolphins, all pro for 12 years. This is a bad big dude. 250 pounds, strength, agile, and all muscle. He said, Larry, he said, man, you know Brown down there. He's down there talking about your mom and everything. <laughs> he talked about how fat and sorry you are and how he's going to knock you off this boy. Larry now spitting fire and growling and foaming at the mouth. And I'm looking at Larry saying, oh, hubba hubba. He said, look at that fool down there growling. He told me he's going to scare you that you're going to leave. Are you going to leave? No, coach, I ain't going to leave. Go down there and knock him out the park. Boy, coach got back. He winked at me. Go get him, Brown. I went, ah. I ran into Larry with my helmet. Larry said, boom. <laughs> I don't know where I landed. <laughs> when they woke me up, I said, can y'all take this helmet off me for a minute? I said, y'all got any more positions out here? <laughs> they said, like where? I said, don't y'all need an announcer? <laughs> they 
I said, Brian, where you going? I was crying. They said, man, some girls over there. I said, I don't care, man. I'm hurting. <laughs> said, that fool almost killed me, man. He said, bro, you quit, man. I said, yeah. I said, what? I said, it ain't worth it, man. No, it ain't worth it. Y'all go ahead. Y'all crazy. I'll be your announcer, man. I was calling the game. I was up there in the booth. Call good games, too, because the pain wasn't worth it to me. And I'm saying to you, you know why people do what they do? The people who go after their stuff, what makes it worth it? It's got to be your passion. You got to love it, ladies and gentlemen. You got to love it. It's got to be what you are supposed to do. You want to sing, and even though they want to invite you to Carnegie Hall, you're going to sing to anybody that listen to you, including singing to yourself. I used to talk to my plants when nobody else would listen to me. You got to write, even if no one published your book, write because that was given to you to do. You do what it is you're supposed to. You're supposed to build something. You're supposed to create something. I don't know how to do it. Learn. Do whatever is required. Just go out there. It's possible you can get what you want. It's necessary. If you want it, you got to go into action. You got to be willing to experiment. You got to be willing to fail and to succeed. You got to be willing to form and to develop new relationships. It's you. It's on you. You got to make that happen. Nobody's going to bring it to you on a silver platter and say, here's your dream manifested. No, it's hard. Yes, it's hard. It's difficult. Yes, right. And it's worth it.